think everyone might have a game that they were very fond of, despite never really progressing all that far through it. Until recently, Ruckus was that for me. And until I sat down to play it recently, I never got past the stage with an aircraft carrier. But I still thought the game was superb, demanding a mix of dexterity and strategic planning. Today on Yesteryear's Mac Games, we're looking at Ruckus by Ian Henley. If you like commanding vehicles around, dropping in mercenaries, blowing stuff up, and trying again, and again, and again, and again, until you've got everything right, well, this game has it all. The puzzle solving aspect really does get you thinking, and trying different things to achieve an objective, on top of the level diversity, stops it from getting stale. Ruckus is compatible with System 6, which is surprising considering the game came out in 1995, but also because most System 6 Macs fall foul of various other requirements, such as a 13-inch colour monitor, 3 megabytes of RAM, and 32-bit quick draw. Theoretically then, it'll run on an LC, and early Macintosh 2s. I think it might possibly be reasons to do with having been written with System 6 in mind that the first version of the game I came across on a magazine cover disc wouldn't boot on my performer of the day running System 7. Sometime later, the game appeared again, with the folder titled New Ruckus. This is the version you can download today. Presumably, it was a compatibility patch, as this one actually works. The game, however, has no version number in it that I can see, and no changelog, so goodness knows what was fixed. It will run all the way up to macOS 9.2. However, there are some very noticeable sound glitches. One other bug is the game's inability to quit without crashing the entire Mac. So force quit it with Command, Option and Escape, if you don't fancy rebooting afterwards. The game takes place over 22 levels, with each of them containing various combinations of the three types of objectives. The player will rescue hostages, destroy drug crops, and capture flags held by hostile troops. To achieve this, there are three vehicles available to use. The Apache helicopter is the most useful, and able to carry hostages to safety, and use a whole host of weapons and gizmos. The tank has a powerful flamethrower that burns drug crops, mines, and hostile mercenaries, but it can't fly and requires the Chinook to hook it over things. Said Chinook has a limited offensive capability, but can transport your mercenaries around the play area. Equipment isn't cheap, and so while you can purchase a vehicle multiple times if you crash the first one, finances are finite. A bit of extra cash leaves room for some error, but on the whole, if you mess up, the level will need to be restarted. The game goes a bit Monty Python when this is selected. Isn't that beautiful? I'm not kidding when I say you'll be seeing a lot of this massive foot while playing through the game. Upon starting a level, the game will give you a preview of all the objectives to complete allowing you to see where everything is before the mercenaries start running back and forth. This assists with generally figuring out what it is you're going to do first. For this stage, trial and error has burned into my head the drop points for my mercenaries. The notches that look like a ruler at the top of the play area are used to help you figure out where the dropship will drop things off. For instance, this surface-to-air missile trooper needs to be removed so the Apache can get past it one piece. I mentioned the Apache has a host of guns and gizmos to make use of. Some can be found in the level, but much like the mercenaries, the player will call for most of it in. Remember to get the coordinates right, so you don't spend money on something that becomes inaccessible. Take care when dropping troops too. A mercenary can't parachute anywhere. With the exception of the enemy's surface-to-air missile trooper, others on the ground shoot those floating down. There's also these blue electric thingies that will zap troops that jump in too close. Although if you're feeling particularly callous, in some cases, you can send heaps of guys down to their electric -y death and get one or two to the ground. Their sacrifice will not be forgotten. As well as hostiles walking around, the Apache will need to deal with fixed guns and other flying objects. The aircraft carrier level, for instance, sees you attacked by a hostile chopper almost instantly. I found these particularly difficult to kill, Homing dirigibles are another nuisance, but these can easily be destroyed with a multi-missile. A problem that can arise during scraps like this is that a damaged Apache becomes incredibly unstable. It can't hover still, so trying to aim bombs or bridges properly becomes very difficult indeed, and the terrain becomes deadly. If anything touches the rotary blades, it's an insta-destruction. 
Most guns can be polished off with Sidewinder missiles, and the cannon is effective at killing troops. But care with this is advised, as all mercenaries carry a booby trap that sends shrapnel everywhere if they're shot by a vehicle. It's quite deadly, and will be the cause of many lost helicopters. Once all threats or obstacles have been eliminated, the Apache can pick up hostages, the tank can burn crops, and troops can be called in to have little skirmishes with others. There are three types, not counting the enemy-only SAM trooper, and they behave differently, which I found really cool actually. Using the right troops in certain situations is key. The wrong type will run away from a situation like a massive wimp. Actually, getting a mercenary from wherever they have been dropped to wherever they need to go is a theme that crops up quite frequently. The Apache can drop bridges and boats and bomb other protrusions to help them out. But getting the ground even enough for them to pass is perhaps one of the more frustrating tasks in the game. It's quite difficult predicting the resulting shape of the ground once the explosion has concluded. Everything else in the game is quite well designed, resulting in a very varied set of levels. Unfortunately, unless you get helplessly stuck, the 22 stages just breeze by. There's no real reason to complain about this. It was a shareware game that eventually became freeware, but I was left wanting more. Imagine what a level editor could have brought to this game. So it is short, but it is sweet. On the back of this, I had a bit of a think about what other games were similar, and didn't get very far. There's Armor Alley, the main vehicle is a chopper, you can buy mercenaries and vehicles, and it's all side-scrolling. But this is a tad more arcade, with the goal being to get a van to the other side of the screen. A small review I found of Ruckus, that was in French, also likened it to Choplifter, which sees you pilot a helicopter, shoot things in the same wonky way as Ruckus, thanks to the angle that the craft is pointing at, and rescue hostages. Hit me up with any other similarities in the comments. I'd love to hear about them. All in all, Ruckus is definitely worth a try. So if you fancy taking a shot at a retro side-scrolling military-themed strategic action puzzle game, there's probably an easier categorization than that, bag a download at the Macintosh repository or Macintosh Garden. For further expeditions into the realms of Macintosh shareware, do check out some of my other videos and subscribe to keep on top of new content. I'm generally working on three or four different ideas at any one time, so there'll always be something in the pipeline. Thanks for watching then, and see you next time.